produce. Right. And a pleasant day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and we're going to dive right into with E Money. He was just on recently, so you definitely have to recognize him. If you didn't check out that video, you definitely should go back and check out that video. Um, but we're going to dive right into the playoffs and where we think the percentage chances of the teams in it are to actually be able to go all the way, how deep we think they'll go, or if they're more of a regular season team than we think they will be a playoff team. But first and foremost, E Money, how are you doing to this? I, I barely heard you because I, I just hate Skype. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, a while ago, I didn't have glasses, and now I have them, and it just makes my life better. Um, did you want to start with, like, the East or the West? Um, for right now, I, get, I let's start with the East, since I think because we – talked about that so much and it's been said so for a while we can kind of cruise yeah, and we're, we're in, we're in, yeah i mean we live yeah. in the east coast too yeah, so why not? a little bit quicker and then we'll go to the yeah. west but we'll work um from the ground up just just make it a little bit more interesting washington was a solid battling regular season team this year but they have flaws to me that don't make me personally think they have the best chance to have the deepest run your team because one of the, the biggest one is you have to have a set a set in stone goaltender. Well, th that's not necessarily set. They're trying to play Sam Stone off a lot at uh -huh. the end of the season when Vanacek kind of has been better than him this season. So, like, what are, what are your uh, opinion on the percentage chances that is your team of them having a having a chance to go? Because you obviously as a fan. Can yeah. be critical of them, and I know you're blunt about it too. So you're not going to like sugarcoat if you don't think. That oh yeah, I'm. I'm not one of those like go happy fans that's going to say, yeah, my team's going to win everything every single year. Um, I mean, if I had to put a percentage on it, like just spitballing it, uh, maybe like maybe like a. Like a ten percent chance. If you were going to say ten, that's that you completely agree with Pirlo and I then, because I was. Yeah, like, it's low. I'm not expecting much at all. But then again, like four years ago, nobody expected the Caps to do it. But also, too, at the time, we had a better roster, um, maybe arguably a better coach. Um, I, I guess that could be about even. I mean, you can debate between the two, whatever. But we, no doubt about it, we had a better roster. We were younger. We were hungrier because we never won a cup. All those years of choking and not living up to the expectations. Expectations are low for us, like no doubt about it. Um, the goaltending isn't all that great. Samsonov sucks. He hasn't been the guy that we thought he was going to be. A lot of people were looking at him as like the next messiah and everything, and he just has not lived up to it. And, um, I mean, Vtex just like – he's – He's okay at best. I think Vitek's the better goalie than Samsonov based on watching the two. Um, but yeah, I don't great. think Vitek. I don't think Vitek's the guy that can like steal a series. Um, I think at his best, he's a backup goaltender. Like if a team grabbed him as a backup, like that would be a pretty good acquisition. Like if he was a backup to like let's just say like Frederick Anderson for an example or Vasilevsky, whatever. Like that's pretty good. Um, I mean, we're, we're just an, we're just an older team. I mean, the roster's good. Again, I'm not expecting much at all. Uh, more than likely, uh, oh wow, we're only one point behind Pittsburgh. We're either gonna play the Hurricanes or not, not the Hurricanes. I'm sorry. We're either gonna play the Rangers or the Panthers. I don't like either <laughs> of those chances <laughs> against either or. Um, I guess if I had to pick my poison, maybe New York, because I think Florida is like the worst possible matchup for us with how good they're all. Probably offensive. have a better goaltender chance against Florida, though. Oh, that's true, too, because Bobrovsky sucks in the playoffs. I mean, I yeah, he's only yeah. had a couple runs in the playoffs. I think, yeah, he's yeah. Here, I mean, it's some credit too in the regular season. Yeah, I'd give him like a 10%. It's, it's really, it's really not that much. When I do my bracket challenge with you guys, I'm going to pick us to lose in round one just to be realistic so that is what it is yeah. i'm just glad we're getting playoff hockey at a, at a normal season so no i agree with that like we don't have that here as philly fans so i definitely am jealous you guys even get the playoff hockey <laughs> yeah. but uh <laughs> yeah. the, um, yeah. <laughs> we have that with the royals the team i cover the chl who's up 2-0 oh in their series uh check out the uh, press conference we did this morning with coach Kirk oh, yeah, McDonald, so definitely check that out but mm -hmm. uh 
there, you guys would have to win based off of stud defensive play. And, and Ovi would just have like, to, like... Ovi would just have to go off, where it's not that you... Like, obviously, if you're Rory Carson, that's a great defensive pairing in the league. And then Jensen and Orlov is honestly a pretty solid defensive pair, yeah. too. Cause, but the third line of Schultz and Van Riemsdyk, that's not fantastic. So there's no, teams that go three deeper. And in the bottom, you have guys like Hathaway, who actually are guys that might step up more down, those bigger guys that play through guys in the playoffs step up more. So you have those guys. The problem is... They, I think Lav, um, Peter Laviolette kind of got the most he could get out of this roster mm-hmm. this year by making them play to the up any the whole season to be able to get to where they're at, that there's a certain point that eventually you're going to lose the energy and fire under that, where I think we kind of saw that at some in the regular season. And, and the big compounding part is, it seems like the organization right now is trying to push Sam Sohn off when, as you said yourself, Vanacek's not the sexiest goaltender, but he definitely has performed significantly better than Ilya this year. Yeah. They should be letting him play and let him play in the postseason because, to me, I think he's at backup level right now. But from what I have saw at the start of his career through now, I think Vanacek could, if he goes to a team that's building a good – like if he goes to the Kings, for example, that are building a good defensive structure – he could be successful there platooning with Pedersen and being like a 1B, the guys that, similar to this year, 42 to 40 games, like something like that. I think he could still be successful doing that. It's just you don't. the problem with that is you don't have the second guy doing his job. So you have to have both doing their job when you have a platoon. You can't have one guy doing his yeah. and then the other guy not succeeding. So that's. That's the issue I have. Uh, Samsonov, I think, would have to step up big time, or Vanacek would have to do something that unexpected. Uh, for, so I would right. say it's a 10% um, chance for them as well. But in terms of the regular season, when I do my season wrap-up for them, there are guys you have to look forward to in the future, potentially, mm-hmm. like Mick Michael as he grows, because you don't have a lot of young players. So as he grows, right. he's somebody to look forward to. So fear of already, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. And then even a guy that mixed in, maybe he can be a – bottom sixer because he always was good for Hershey and pissed me off every time he played the freaking Phantom. Uh, Joe Snively is a guy that will be interesting to see how he progresses as a bottom because he's definitely a guy that works his ass off on the ice every shift that you know is never taking a shift off. So like those guys are definitely good to at least keep his depth pieces or good solid potential developing bottom sixers and usually those guys develop not until they're 26, 27 and that's around where he's at. So I wouldn't be surprised if he becomes kind of a mainstay eventually in that bottom uh, six. Oh, yeah. And Mantha has to be better. But if Mantha's better, too, he's only 27. So you still have that guy yeah. on your team. He just wasn't what you expect. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll start off. I'm guessing we'll talk about Pittsburgh next. I guess we may as well just go, like, division to division. Um, so Well, I was uh, going to do Boston just because they're the other wild card. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we'll do Boston. Yeah, let's do Boston. Yeah. That's fine. Um, I'll, I'll go first with Boston, if that's yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this East Conference is just monstrous, too. That's another reason why Washington gets a low chance, because everybody that's in the playoffs for the East is that all eight teams have pretty much been set in there for the past two months. Um, I mean, Boston – it's looking like they're destined to meet the Hurricanes in round one. I, 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 is that matchup officially set in stone? If not, it's got to be like 99% chance right now that it's going to be Boston and uh, the Hurricanes right now. Um, I, I mean, I guess it's pretty much set in there. Uh, it all depends. I mean, Boston could get lucky because the Hurricanes, at least from where I was reading last night, I haven't read it today, but – they weren't sure with Frederick Anderson. They were saying there's a good chance that he can miss the first round or at least the first couple games. They were saying that Ranta should be ready by round one, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, Boston would have a better chance going up against Ranta than Anderson, clearly based on how Anderson's been this year, which Anderson's going to get second or third in the Vezina voting this year, I would, I would think. Um, and Carolina already is just a – awesome team top to bottom um i mean boston's good I, it's it's one of those things where it's like it's their window has to be closing soon because they're they're a bit of an older team um we don't really know how swayman is in the playoffs just yet there's some unknowns there 
Um, I mean, they have good veterans. Now either is in the playoffs huh? because Allmark hasn't seen the playoffs either because he was with Buffalo. So both oh, yeah, that's true. Don't yeah, know. That, yeah, that yeah. is true. So, I mean, I would think they would go with Swayman first in the playoffs. Um, I would imagine that he would be the starter going into that. I would agree with that's what I would do. I would be interesting to see if they pull the veteran, start the veteran in game one move, though, that other teams have definitely done in the past that we've seen from watching hockey over the years. Yeah, yeah, and, and that'll be an interesting move. I mean, they have a good coach in Coach Cassidy. Um, I feel like they're missing a couple pieces at forward. They don't have, like, a true number two center. Um, defense has been a little bit better than people expected. Charlie McAvoy's piece. Uh, I, I'd give, I'd give Boston about like a, f- I'd give them like a fifteen percent chance of of winning the whole thing. Um, again, I'm just spitballing numbers here. I don't, I don't even know if I'm gonna give anybody a hundred percent chance because it's gonna be so hard to call. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens when they face Carolina if they have Frederick Anderson or not. That'll be an interesting series. Um, that one should be remotely competitive. So. Yeah, I think that will be a really competitive series because also uh, I think in Rod Brindamore's system, that was a perfect place for Ronta to go at this point of his career. And it showed in the fact that he was able to be one of the league's better backups this year Um, after having a slow start. He became that after about the first, I want to say it was a month of the season, if I remember correctly. And then uh, I'm somebody that adores following goalie talent. I like following prospects in general. I think everybody realized that, but, but, but goalies, where Kachekov didn't even play that much in the lower leagues because he was too good that he played so much in the KHL as a 21, 20-year-old. Didn't get as much opportunities as he should have because they don't like playing guys that are on loan because they're not going to, which I kind of hate about the KHL, but that's a different story for a different time, Uh, that where um, he played great over there and now has come over here and the only reason hit the first two games his save percentage wasn't fantastic off the charts numbers wise. If you just look at stats, was he didn't face a lot of shots, so he would let in like one shot. But they did deed up like we expect the Carolina Hurricanes to do. Uh, they're a great defensive team, so their goalies don't always face a lot of shots. So I think uh, they're definitely a dangerous team in that perspective against the Bruins, even if. They don't have all the goaltending just because the Bruins are not. You kind of hinted at it with what you said, but the Bruins aren't the biggest, um, like freakishly silky Mitch team. The more the other than Pasternak, the more of the uh, go to the hard net front grind goals team. And I feel like against Carolina, that's really tough to do with them being one of the best defensive teams at knocking you off the puck and just defense in general in all of hockey. So it's going to be interesting how that matchup does because the Bruins are able to do that pretty much against anybody, but Carolina might be the where they meet their maker just because of how good they are at protecting their net front that the bees might not be able to really play that like almost blue collar, just grit style of hockey consistently that you definitely always see them play in the playoffs that it, the, the, that's what worries me about their shape. But, but I would say I'm, I'm more at 20 just because if they get past Carolina, then my chances are going to go higher. And I think that series is going at least six because DeBrusque all of a sudden after he requested a trade got significantly better and started playing like Jake DeBrusque a couple years ago again. So that was helpful. Um, Bergeron and Marshawn are both great. We know that. Um, Taylor Hall is th- – but in the playoffs, um, I would expect him to be a guy offensively, at least, that'll step up more. Pa- him and Pasta do work well together. The big issue, you're right, is center. If they're able to get a good enough play from Eric Halla and the Charlie Coils of the world in the postseason, then they can be a dangerous team. But similar to the Wild, a team will get to the – big, the big issue could be center depth, uh, which – can really knock them because I like their first two defensive pairings and their third defensive pairing because of the career years of Forbert and Connor Clifton has actually looked pretty good because both of those guys just all of a sudden had career good years this year. And then they also have Riley, who's a league veteran. They picked up Josh Brown. So like they have some depth there. I don't think Carolina was the greatest matchup for them round one, as you kind of hinted at. So I'll put it at 20, but I do think they kind of could be a dark horse team, so to speak, because if they get past Carolina, people are really, I think, going to be talking about Boston at that point. But I think um, 
now is our next team. You kind of hit it on the head, so I'll let you um, – if you want to go first on this one again because uh, you were talking uh, about Pittsburgh a Pitt- second. Pittsburgh? Ago. Yeah, yeah, Pittsburgh Penguins. And we'll um, them, who have some similarities to the Bees, too, I might add, before yeah. them because they're an aging core, but yeah. having other guys come in that are playing well around that aging core that's able to get them to be as successful. Yeah. I mean, Jari's been really good this year. Um, I mean, Crosby's Crosby. I mean, Malkin, Malkin kind of looks like he's declining a little bit. Um, me personally, uh, I mean, like you know, like you said, the core's still there, Latang's still there. Um, they they got they got a mix of some pretty good young guys too. Um, gosh, who I can't think. My brain's like frozen. Who's the guy they picked up at the deadline that's been good for them? Um, Raquel. Oh. Ricardo. Yeah, Ra- Raquel. Raquel has been an awesome fit for them. That's been a big addition to them. I mean, Mike Sullivan's one of the best coaches in the league. He gets the most out of his team every year, especially when they're injured half the time. Um, it's crazy that he hasn't won a Jack Adams before. Um, I, I'd probably say, well, they would play. Oh, they're a point ahead of us. It's looking like they'll either play the Rangers in the first round the Panthers in the first round. Um, I mean, the Rangers have gotten the better of them throughout this season. Doesn't really mean a whole, whole lot. So it's like tit for tat on that. I'd, I'd probably say about like a 20% chance for Pittsburgh. Actually, I don't know. I, I'd give it 15 because I feel like they've been cold lately too. You can't really go into the playoffs cold. I'd, I'd say about 15%. For- yeah. I think, um, for me, I have it a little bit higher, but that's also because if Tristan Yari's healthy, the big reason they've been cold lately is Casey DeSmith is a good backup, but that's what he is. He's a good backup. Yeah, he's a backup. Yeah. And he's been having to start. And then Louis Domingue is a journeyman. That's great in the AHL, but he is a journeyman at the NHL level. So I think those two things put together – um, or why they haven't looked the best and have that four, five, and one record in the last 10, uh, where it is because they don't have their guy that probably could be top 10 in Vezina voting himself, uh, and Tristan Yari in right now. So I think that goes miles to the point where if he's fully healthy, I would say they're maybe 20. There's the, I'd do an odd even percentage. I'd say 22% because I give them, I think they have more of a chance than Boston. So I have to give them a higher percentage point than Boston. Mm-hmm. So uh, um, I think uh, they have a team, like you said, with bringing in Malkin, or not Malkin, but bringing in Raquel, who's actually, Malkin isn't the same Malkin, you're right, but has worked yeah, well with Raquel since coming back. McGinn on that line makes sense to me by player structure wise. Uh, Carter, I think, is a guy that's good to have for the players. Kapanen, if he's he's kind of your diamond in the rough guy because he hasn't been great in the regular season. But if he plays like people think Piscari Kapanen has in his skates in the postseason, that's kind of one of those, oh, crap, where did this come from? Potential postseason players that you could see like the R.J. Umbergers of the world the one year he went off for the Flyers. Um, and then Rodriguez, having him on your fourth line with Bluger and Heinen, that's become one of the better – fourth lines this year so they have depth line wise um my thing with pittsburgh is they on defense i like their first two i do like matheson and ruedel but ruedel's been above his head this year is that going to continue into the postseason because he's a guy that developed really late at the nhl level um and is matheson going to continue to be baller because he's been great for pittsburgh but we've seen flaws in his game when he played for florida is the, are those going to come out in the postseason? Those are the only things that are, where Yari, I'm not really too worried about if he's fully healthy, but their matchup's tough. That's why, like you said, with the brute force of the East, I kind of put it only at 22%. If the East wasn't this ridiculous juggernaut like it is this year, I would probably have put Boston and uh, Pittsburgh's percentages a little bit higher. Right, right. Uh, the next so one will be the Rangers since. Yeah. That's that true. one, that one's interesting. Um, I mean, I that would be the dark horse of the East. Um, and I've been I've been saying it before the season even started. Even though I originally said Islanders beat Vegas in the Cup, I always felt like Rangers 
were just that they just had that dark horse potential. Um, real young team, real fast. A lot of good players on that team on both ends of the ice. They didn't really lose anybody that important to the expansion draft because the team was just basically too young and they were all, well, not all, but most of them were just protected already. Um, I mean, as we've already said a thousand times, Shesterkin already won the Vesna like three months ago. Um, Adam Fox is one of the best defensemen in the world. Uh, they finally have a coach instead of a college coach. Um, I mean, I like uh, Gallant. I don't know why the Golden Knights fired him. I don't know if Gallant like slept with the owner's wife or what was going on there. Like, I don't know why they fired him. That still baffles me. And Vegas fans are like, yeah, we don't know either. Um, I mean, more than likely they're going to play the Penguins or Capitals round one, which I would favor the Rangers against both of those teams. Um, I mean, no, no road's really easy with the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's just – it's going to be a war, especially in the East. And with the Rangers, I guess, would be the um, – I would say like the lack of experience. I don't think the team has a whole, whole lot of experience. I don't know if they're quite, like, ready. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're, they're a bit green. But I also think an expansion team to the finals whose roster was not even really all that good – then he can do some wonders with this Rangers team that has Panarin and Fox and Zibanejad and um, Shesterkin, like all these studs um, on that team. I would say I, I'd give the Rangers – oh, and let's not forget Kreider. Yeah, Kreider's like, been a beast. All he does is stand in front of the net, but he gets 52 goals. Like literally all he does is stand right in front of the net, but he gets goals, and half of them oh, are just he's like the- He's the much quicker uh, – because he's not – this guy was a slow skater. He's the much quicker version, current era, Mike Knubel. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't, I, I, don't think, I don't think Kreider will ever come close to the goal numbers again. Um, and I'm also kind of worried teams might figure him out in the playoffs. And also, too, there's not going to be as many power plays because the refs hold their whistle more. But either way, like, he's had a good year. Like, that's just my take on him. Uh, I mean, lafreniere has been um, – Man, I, I'd say about – where's is – Pan, oh, is Panarin injured? Oh, he'll come back. He's day-to-day. Yeah, Panarin yeah, will come back. He's a day-to-day injury. Yeah, yeah he'll, he'll come back for the playoffs. Those guys play with any sort of crazy injury, really. And then Andrew Kopp was a good deadline guy. I'm looking at the dailyfaceoff.com because I was, like, thinking – I know I forgot. Yeah, something. Kopp's also lower body, but I would – Yeah, he'll come back. Uh, uh I'd say about I'd, I'd say about thirty percent for Rangers. Give give me thirty. That team's pretty darn good. I think they could do some damage in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, I think they can too. I think you hit it on the head with um, their young, their youth being the biggest concern, just because they don't have the experience. Like two twenty four year old defensemen is their top line, great top line with Lindsay yeah. Fox, but two twenty four year old defensemen. Then yes. Keandre Miller, who's playing great with Truba, twenty yep. two year old with the veteran on the defense. Uh, Jay Truba, Nemes a veteran, but it's not like like Nemes a solid. He's nothing special though. Uh, Braden, he's with Braden Schneider, who's been doing really solid himself. You also have Justin Braun there, who's a veteran. They could put in uh, Hijik and jo- Zachary Jones, uh, who's probably better than Hijik. Uh, that 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 they have his depth. Uh, so th- they have options there when it comes to youngsters. Um, and they also have had surprise players that because of Gallant, like you said, how he was able to get the most out of guys in Vegas, like Johnny Brzezinski, who's played 20 games with the Rangers unexpectedly because of how good he's played in Gallant's system. So uh, the, all those things um, put together really help them. And the fact that they have the Barkley, Goodrows, and Frank Vetranos of the world on their team as well, those are kind of those just grit playoff style players. Goodrow in the kind of can be throwback sense of beating the crap out of you and also score in the net front where for Toronto's kind of the, I'm going to just plow through you, even though I'm five eleven, I play like I'm six, three type guy. And those are the guys you want to have in the playoffs. I think Kreider's another side. So they have some guys that I think their roster actually profiles pretty well on paper to the playoffs. And so then Gauthier, uh, Brzezinski, McKeg, that's a line that can kind of beat people up. If you have those more skilled fourth lines of some teams, that are going against that line, they can kind of beat you up a little bit with a guy that's 215 and 227 on that line. So I think that I really like there where I would give them 
maybe even as high as like 35 because I do really like the yeah. um, chances. It's just my only, literally my only concern with them is youth. They don't have the experience, but they added the good of the world for that reason because he's been in those spots yeah. to get that. Yeah. So I that that does help. So I, I would That's probably give them a, a 35, honestly, just because of that and how good uh, – uh, he was able to come in and provide a spark, and Vetrano was able to come in and provide a spark. But our next team is a team that I know somebody from the Great Flyers at a gritty site, Samantha Wismer, also loves talking about as well as she does a podcast on them as well as the Flyers. Oh, is wow. the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, Rod Brindamore's team, who I walked past in the PPL Center while covering the regionals as he was getting food at the concession stands. Oh, that's, that's interesting. So that was interesting, yeah. But uh, yeah. Brindamore's uh, Hurricanes, what are your thoughts and the percentage chances on, I mean, as I've already said, one of the best defensive teams in my opinion? Yeah, it, it all depends on – a lot of it depends on Frederick Anderson. Like we don't know how exactly long he's going to be out for. And from what I keep hearing, it might be the first few games. If they can survive that first series without him being in half of it, I like their chances a lot. Like this team is a couple of years. Um, I think they made it to like a conference when they, no, they didn't make it to a conference final last year the year before but the year i think it was like the year before the pandemic hit they were in the conference finals to, i believe against, yeah i think so. yeah yeah because they swept the islanders and then they got swept that was the year where there was a bunch of sweeps because the islanders swept the penguins the hurricanes swept the islanders and then the bruins swept the hurricanes in my memory oh, yeah, 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 I think, yeah yeah you're right that yeah was, yeah in my, i mean i only i only remember that because i i worked with a guy that was an islanders fan and uh, my soon-to-be brother-in-law is a Hurricanes fan, so I'm like, okay, I remember that. Um, and then the last two years, I think they went down the second round. I don't know. This team's just been there. Like, they've been kind of knocking on the door a little bit. Um, I mean, good good roster on both sides of the ice. I mean, very well-rounded team. Brendan Moore's an awesome coach. Um, I tell you what, Seth Jarvis has been a stud this year. You want to talk about good rookies. He's been good. Oh, Shveshnikov is good. I probably pronounced that wrong, but whatever. No, that was, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just – I mean, the, the team's pretty darn loaded, like kind of all over the place. I mean, good top six, uh, good bottom guys. Slavin's one of the most underrated players in the world. Uh, I forgot they even have they even have Tony D'Angelo pairing with him. And then <laughs> she's a good defenseman. Um, I kind of like Ian Cole's a bottom guy. Yeah, he's a good uh, bottom pairing defense. Yeah, I mean they're they're a well-rounded team. Um with with Anderson, like assuming he'll come back real soon, they can survive a game or two or three without him. I'd get I'd give him like I'd give him like a I think I said 30 for Rangers. I'd give Hurricanes like a 35 just because of how like experienced the group is, how good the team is all around, the coaching, like a lot of stuff is like right there, and they they play with such a relentless pace. The four checks absolutely insane. Um, that's yeah, at that, that thirty five, I'm gonna go thirty five. What yeah, assuming think, Anderson is in the picture? Yeah, I think that's a very fair uh, grade for me. Um, they also have, I mean, when you look at guys that aren't even in, Lorenz has played good for them right now. Kakaniemi's uh, banged up, so he hasn't even played the final uh, handful of games all of them and he's a day-to-day so he'll be in there he'll probably sub back in for Derek Stefan and then you have the veteran Derek Stefan who's filled in when needed on the fourth line so they seem to kind of just have the plug and play guys that you want to have if needed as well in the postseason Ethan Bear is another one you get more from the offensive zone from him than you get with the Brendan Smith and Cole not necessarily point production wise but in terms of snappy passing so if you want to have that more you could sub him into your third line so I think the options and Toys Rod Brindamore has to play with gives him so much flexibility there. And then you have a goaltender come in 
that hasn't even seen any NHL action and play three great games. You go three and zero for you after yeah. playing great in the AHL after coming over. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be the con Smythe. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exa- exactly. Like, like that, <laughs> oh my you know, gosh, that'd be insane. He's gonna be like Ottinger uh, was for um, Dallas that one year when he first came up, and he was able to step up for them, and then all of a sudden was able to have playoff runs, or like Demko, where you're just like, what in the hell is this? Yeah, it's like, like where um, you have that going on, but. Yeah, they, they just seem to have that great culture, great vibes since Rob Rinnemore's walked through the front door that yeah. whoever steps into that team has their best season. Because even Jesper Fast, yes, he hasn't produced the most points, but I've watched a lot of Ra- – not Rangers games, uh, Hurricanes games this year. That was his former team. And he looked really sharp in a lot of these games compared to past where you always thought he had a little bit more to give, where he you, you kind of seen that more to give – they got the most out of him too. So I think all that put together for them, since I went 35% um, on my last team, uh, which was New York, which I think was a very figure. I'm going to go even to 38 for the, uh, for th- this team, because I think I was even thinking of 40, but I'm going to put some other teams in that. There's just so many teams. Yeah. Where um, I think they have a great chance because they, you said they have the more experienced guys that have fought, the behinds off like fast to continue to prove themselves in the league. That's now having a career year and also a career year on defense. Not so uh, th- that's also very helpful when you have great bottom six defense and Marty Nake is similar to how Slavin's one of the more underrated defensemen. He just, because of how stacked his team is plays in the bottom six and doesn't get the credit for how good he right, is. Right, right. He's one of the most underrated defensive forwards as well. So you have defense from the forward court back to defensemen. Defense wins championships. Freddie being in there is a big key. That's why I think this yep. team has a great chance to win the cup because they also now are three deep in net. If need, not that you want Ron. I think they have the number one defense right now, if I'm not mistaken. They do. Yeah, I think that. But even like, if you don't look at it, even like if you just watch, like watching the league, they look like each night the best defensive team out there. Even yeah. if they are incredible, don't just um go by the numbers so all that compounded with what you said and what i just said i would definitely say uh 38 but as we wrap up the last uh three teams in the uh east the tampa Before, bay lightning oh go ahead oh i i was gonna say one question i hope it's not too big of a deal can we do the three east and then can i come back later and do and we can just go into the west because i have a doctor's appointment a little bit and i didn't realize we were gonna go this long with one conference Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, as long as I have the time uh, later, we can do it. If not, we can literally do the West um, tomorrow if you have time in the afternoon or whatever. We yeah, do. yeah we'll, we'll work something in there. I'm sorry for being a pain. I, I'm like, no, looking at fine. the time, and I'm like, oh, crap, I got to get going soon. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's fine. Yeah, so we got three more. That's cool. Uh, so Lightning, um, back-to-back champs. I mean, Stamkos this is thing, playing like prime Stamkos around. Yeah, Stamkos has been stepping it up huge. It's still – impresses me to this day that they won a cup with Stamkos only playing in like one period. Um it was that was one shift. <laughs> yeah like, it was like that one little, shift he scored. What, yeah was it what, was it one ice. shift? I thought it was yeah, one it was, period. Yeah I know it was literally remember he got on the ice and you could see he was laboring a bit. He scored that goal. And then he went back on the bench. Yeah he he, he plays I, one yeah, shift I just, gets yeah. one and then he just was like, nah, yeah. that's, it, that's it. Like, he basically that, came back as the captain just for morale to say, I'm here with you, boys. I'm here for the Yeah. Run. Once and he was just, coming back, yeah. he knew it was done. I was like, all right, Lightning are, are going to win the cup. Like, it's it. that's got to be one of the most, like, impressive cup victories that I've ever seen. And and now the way he's played, I mean, Kucherov's still really good. Braden Point's good. I mean, this team's clearly loaded everywhere. Um I mean, let's not forget even their their bottom pair, Pat Maroon and Corey Perry. They're awesome fourth line players that bring a whole lot of grit and physicality. And Belmore, Belmore's an awesome fourth line. Se- se- yeah, se- yep, yep. Se- and then and then Hedman's still having a really good year. Um, he'll probably get like third or fourth in the Norris voting. Um, I mean, the goaltending Vasilevsky, like I still firmly believe he's the best goaltender in the world. My only, sorry, my only thing is like. You got to think they would tire out at some That's point. Thing. <laughs> Going back to back, like a three peat hasn't happened since like the 80s Islanders where they four peated, but also, too, the league wasn't as competitive back then as it is now. Um, I'd say, I mean, yeah, they're, pretty, man, they're pretty darn good. Uh, 
I'd give him like I'd give him like a twenty five percent. Eh, I'll go thirty. I'll, I'll give him like a thirty. Yeah, that one we're kind of lockstep with. I would say they're about thirty just because of how stacked the league is and um, how great the uh, Eastern Conference is, but. I do like the ability that they have when they know they have to lose people just because of the means of the business for financial reasons. Yeah, they've yeah. been able to bring in the Nicholas Pauls by moves. They've been able to bring in the Braden Haggles by moves that are guys that are going to continue to help them. Ross Colton's obviously a very good young player they got uh, at 118 in 2016. So I think them being one of the teams, I think the Lightning obviously are one of the best mid-round drafting teams, and that's how they kind of find these plug into your roster around your core guys talent um because andre palat was even 208th so like you have all these different uh guys that have done that that they i think are one of those teams that pick in the middle of the draft really well where that's going to continue to come to fruition as you have the next ross coldens come up but i think they are a team that definitely gets at least 30 percent. but pirlo agrees with what we both said too um eventually when you had all these shortened off seasons too with COVID, yeah. you would think the Lightning have to tire out at some point. But yes. there is a team and a team led by a goaltender that can do it, and a captain like Stammer. It would be the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's just the reason I think we're both putting them at thirty percent is you, you, you just got to think at a certain point. Yeah, and then they're going to tire out. Exactly. And then now, with uh, this with Toronto, team, uh, yeah. Let me go first. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just because I want to say I. I I think more than some people, I don't think, now on paper, I don't think, like Pirlo said, I don't think they're the best playoff looking on paper sexy roster for the playoffs compared to the regular season, just be able to dominate in the offensive zone uh, with that top line and even with their second line with T Tavares and whoever moves up with him and Nylander if he's up there, uh, or even Mikhaev because Tavares makes anybody look good around around him, even though not you know, Mikhaev's a bad player, but Tavares definitely props him up. Uh, I think the big thing with Toronto is they don't really have – they have a guy that's filled his role very good in David Comp, but, like, they don't have – but they have great first two-line centers, and then you have guys that fill the roles really well, Comp Blackwell and Comp, who I both like. It's just – how well is that going to play in the playoffs when in the East, all these other teams you talked about, minus one, has really deep three centers. So that's going to be one of the concerns for me when it comes to Toronto. How is your – but but Kampf is very good defensively, so it doesn't trip me out that much. But, like, then how good is a guy, is Pierre Engvall going to play the playoff style? We think he can play because he's a big boy that can knock guys off the puck, or is he kind of going to fall behind? Because they have guys – that can play a good playoff style. It's just they don't always show it in the regular season that they, like like Engvall has great runs and then kind of is a behind the scenes guy you don't notice for a while. And then can he be more consistent? Uh, Robertson's a good young player but hasn't fully uh, developed yet, and he's only twenty. Is he going to be one of those dark horse guys that steps up in the players because that would be huge? And then we know Tavares, we know Marner, we know Matthews, and even Kerfoot I throw in there with the good season he had. We kind of know what you're getting from those guys in the forward core. My que and Nylander, obviously. My questions are, from everybody else, how consistent are those guys going to be in the postseason? And the, some of the guys you rely on are kind of in the twilights when it comes to bringing that extra snarl like the Wayne Simmons and the Spencers of the world. Well, I don't think Simmons is as much in the twilight of his career as Pirlo. I think he still brought some value to the um, Maple Leafs this year, where Pirlo basically thinks he brought no value. Um, so there's a difference of opinion there. But um, mm -hmm. with the Toronto, I do think guys like Labushkin, he's just not great at it, though. That's the problem. They don't have great guys at being playoff star players. They have guys like Labushkin. They have guys that can knock the guys a puck like that. They got Giordano, who I think is going to help them, but they got Giordano – at the very end of his career when he's not the same Mark Giordano as he even was a few years ago when he won, when he was one of the oldest guys, not the oldest to win the Norris. So there's different perspectives here that I think they're a good team, but I think their percentage is about 23 because they're not the best-looking playoff roster. 
in my own opinion, to play playoff style mm-hmm. hockey compared to right. And it also is how great is Jack? Jack Campbell doesn't have a lot of playoff experience. Right. What's Jack Campbell going to do in the playoffs if Cal? If they have to go to Calgary and he's very young, like a lot of what I've seen from him thus far, not always what I've seen from the team playing in front of him, but what's he going to be able to do? And then the, the Leafs aren't the best defensive team, and as we talked about, defense wins championship. How is their defense going to step up? Because their offense is fine, but what's the defense going to do around their goaltending in the postseason? So that's why I kind of put the percentage that low. Oh, boy, mine's even lower. I'm going to make it short and sweet. I give them like a 5%. Defense isn't that good. Goaltending is nothing that great. And they're just cursed. Like, until they do something, I don't believe in them at all whatsoever. They're going to lose to Tampa in seven. I'm going to put in the bracket as soon as the bracket opens up. So I'm going to say 5% for Toronto. Yeah, I mean, for me, their goaltending, I think their defense is the bigger issue because I think Campbell being not playing through something is the biggest concern because he's a goaltender that's had an injury history. But I think when fully healthy um, from being able to follow most of his career, he's been a pretty good goalie. It's just and he's learned from some of the better goalies. Obviously, he was with Quick before. Um, So I think he has all the right tools. It's just you can't be the best if you're playing through, which we don't know if that's the case. He's looked solid since coming back, but we need him to stay a hundred percent. If you're a Leafs fan, you need him to stay a hundred percent healthy right. the entire postseason to have the best success. Cause you don't want Calgren uh, to have to come in or you definitely don't want, uh, well, Mrazic's still out like five weeks or something. Or four. So he probably won't be in unless they go deep, but like, mm-hmm. Mrazic's over aggressive. Yes. He's not a playoff style goaltender unless no. if he kind of can hone in the aggressiveness. Where Campbell is more of a playoff style goaltender. He might not be Mr. Fantastic, but just the, t- the way he plays definitely profiles more to the playoffs than uber aggressive Peter Mrazic that'll sometimes get your whole team out of position. And, and so the, the, there's the kind of a, a difference in uh, style there. But we'll wrap it up with the last team. Uh, that is the Florida Panthers. That is going to be interesting because the Panthers. I think of the team that never took the foot off the gas in the regular season ever. So similar to how we talked about other teams tiring out, do you think there's any, because they just had played for everything, seem to be the team that yeah. wanted the president's trophy for their fans the most because they don't have the richest history. Yeah. So they're the team that actually wants to capture that and say stereotypes be damned. Yeah. Uh and screw what the stereotypes and stats say. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we'll be the next Chicago Blackhawks, and like in 2013, and win the yeah. game anyway. But what do you think their chances of doing that, or do you think they do have chances of tiring out just because they played uh, balls to the wall hockey pretty much in every single game to try to capture that? Well, which is admiring, but also is a fair right. point to say they could. Tire I mean, out. my my opinion is on them. Like they've been awesome this year. I mean, especially considering that Coach Q had to resign at the beginning of the year with all the scandals and all that in the past. And I think Brunette's been amazing. Yeah, he has. Um, I mean, Giroux was a good trade line acquisition. Hubert has been amazing. Barkov's been good. Sam Bennett, Duclair. Like, it just goes on and on and on with, like, how many guys have been awesome for that team this year. Um, of course, Gouda's does good for them and sucked for the Capitals, but whatever. Um that he's My not a, one of those players, though, because he either fits into your mold. Like here in Philly, doesn't. he fit into the mold. With you guys, he didn't. And then with Florida, he does. Like he's one yeah. of those, he has to just, yeah, he does or doesn't. Yeah. He, he um. I mean, my thing is that, like, the two main concerns I have with Florida is, one, if they win the President's Trophy, like. The percentages of, the, of it, that. It goes down because that thing's cursed. And two, Bob Rosky, like, he's not a good playoff goaltender. That's my – those are my main issues. I don't know how Spencer Knight would do because his playoff experience is very limited. I like what I've seen from him. Oh, great. Um, let's just say they win the President's Trophy because it's looking like more than likely – I think they're up two. Are they up two in Colorado or are they tied with Colorado? I think they're up two on them. Um, no, they're up They're up on points. So they have 120. The Avalanche only have 118 right now. Yeah, so let's just say more than likely. We'll, we'll say they win the President's Trophy because they probably will. Uh, that with a combination of uh, Bob Rosky, I'd give him. Um, I'd give him like a thirty percent. Yeah, I would say for me, um, Pirlo. I know when I was listening to his show, we 
disagreed a little bit on Florida with in terms of playoff style performers. Now, the style of hockey they play, they're going to have to tone down. You can't play that bullshit of the wall offense in the playoffs and expect to play good enough defense to win in postseason yeah. hockey. That's not going to work. Uh, right. But you, you, can, I think they have the ability to play a couple different styles because of the team they built. Like Huberto's great both ways and is a guy that we talked about in the past video candidate for the heart. Giroux's great both ways. Barkov's one of the best defensive players in hockey. Oh, yeah. Verhage's yeah. great. But their team, literally their entire de- their entire forward court, minus maybe Anthony Duclair, who before he left, uh, Quinville, uh, as much as I hate to say with the stuff he ended up doing, but but did to make him look better. And then now Brunette's doing the same thing. Akari's kind of been one of those sub-in good defensive player that brings some offense. Liddell's obviously great defensively and has been better offensively sooner in his career than I think some mm-hmm. expected. Um, mm-hmm. We Everyone knew he would be good, but I mean, this good, this soon, I don't know if people expected that. Sam Reinhart, Thornton, Lesteron, and uh, like, I think they have some guys that profile for the players, but I get what Pirlo was saying because they don't have the experience minus the Thorntons of the world that have been in there and he's at the tail end of his career at this yeah. point. The list of Ryan is that profile player style wise is guys that could be good in the playoffs and the Lundells and the Akaris and the uh, Bennett's. They don't all have as much experience. So you're kind of going off of that. But in terms of playoff style players, I do think Florida has it. I just think they're kind of similar to the Reading Royals team I cover in ECHL. They have so much skill. Why the hell would you play with that in the regular season? You're just going to get your guys injured. I don't think they don't have the ability to play with more snarl. I think it because I've seen it from Marchman and guys watching a lot of the games, especially in the battles of Florida, they play with a lot of snarl. I think it's just why use it and set your guys up for potential injury. If you're that skilled in the regular season, you don't need to play with as much fight in terms of literal pounding of guys that you have to in the postseason. I don't think it's they don't have the ability to do it. I think it's just what the hell would you do it for? You're setting yourself up for injury if you do it too much. Yeah. In the regular season, when you have that much skill, where in the postseason, I expect Ben Sherratt to be laying people around the ice. Oh, Heck, yeah. a guy that's been a great addition for them, honestly, Robert Hag is a better postseason defenseman in the regular season because of the way he plays the game. He tries to just block shots and hit you 70 feet off of the puck. So that profile is better for the playoffs than the regular season. Same with Gudis. So I think they have guys that work. The biggest thing you hit on the head, which is why I would give them the 30, about a 32-ish is because of Bob and his playoff woes. I've actually liked what I've seen in the regular season. I think some of my counterparts that I do stuff with have been harsh on Bob's regular season because he just isn't the same Vezina Bob. But he's still been a very good goalie in my mind. He's just never going to be what he was for Columbus ever. Oh, no. But but he's still been a good goalie. Yeah. But for me, my point of why I'm giving them as high as a 32, even in this gauntlet of the East, is – not just Bob, but how I people on my channel know how high I was on Jake Ottinger a couple of years ago, and that's come to fruition as a, a great American goaltender. Well, I'm as high on Spencer Knight as a great American goaltender. So I think as a youngster, if needed, he can just say, screw it, I'm stepping the hell up right now and being this young kid at the age of 21 that everyone's like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, like he's just taking the Panthers into the wonderland. And you're right. going, oh, where's Wiprowski? Like, so, like, mm-hmm. I do think if that's needed, Spencer Knight has the ability to do that. I do kind of hope it's not necessarily needed because I'm also a fan of Bob. But at the same time, if it is needed, I love Spencer Knight. So it's kind of like I can't lose in that situation. So it's a, I'm kind of okay with either way. I do want Florida to win the Stanley Cup, though. I will let that out of the bag. I think all Flyers fans are they're the team I yeah, they're the team I want to win the Stanley Cup because of Drew. Yeah, yeah, and it's not even just because of Drew. I followed Bob his entire Christmas leaving because I think we traded the wrong Russian and acquired the wrong damn Russian, uh, Ilya Brzgalo. Uh But anyway, that's a, just a side note we can get on in a different podcast. I would give them a thirty-two. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. percent chance about because of everything I said. I think they don't get enough credit for actually having playoff style players. It's just if you have that skill of a team, you don't want to set yourself up for injury in the regular season, especially in an era of hockey that doesn't play by that elk as much anymore, other than the St. Louis Blues, the Bruins, and a couple select teams that still do it more, but that's select teams, not the masses anymore. Yeah, I could agree with that. Uh well, anyways, I, I got to get on out of here. Yeah. I'll, te- I'll text you when I get out and everything. If there's like a time to fit in today, I would love to come back and we can go into the West because I do want to go into the West as well. 
Um, that'll also be interesting as well. Maybe not quite as interesting as the East, but there, there's a couple teams I, I like. I think it'll be an interesting one, but we thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you, E-Money, for joining us. This has been the Eastern Conference Playoff Preview Breakdown as we gave you the percentage chances of success we think for each team and broke down why we think they have those percentage chances of success. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please and you subscribe down below. Up above in the easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. We appreciate you guys' love and support this far. Playoff hockey in the NHL is almost here, baby, and also almost here in the AHL. And then for ECHL fans, the Kelly Cup playoffs is already here. Peace out, everybody.